soul will be brought back to him and he will read the salam. He uses these types of arguments. How do we deal with this? Well, we deal with this that these types of arguments are false from the point that what? That that is the life of Barzakh. That is the life which we have no knowledge about except for what is authenticated for us in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have no evidence from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'in, or any of the Sahaba, or the Tabi'in, or its Ba'a Tabi'in, or those who follow them in righteousness up until now, we have no evidence from them. That the life of Barzakh that we that there's an ahkam related to that, meaning that we should supplicate to them, or that we uh, should deal with them and try to interact with the people who are in that life of our barzakh. No, we don't have evidence for that. And we avoid that. We do not uh, make up a new type of ibadah that was not legislated by Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor practiced by the Khulafa Rashidin radiallahu ta'ala anhum, or any of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So, this is how we deal with that. The life of Barzakh, we have only limited knowledge about, and we have no evidence to support that we should supplicate to those people who perhaps, uh, you know, have the life Barzakhiyah, the martyrs and so forth. Nor can we determine who was a righteous saint and died upon righteousness and is in uh, paradise or is in uh, that state. Because we don't know how a person dies. We only know about those people, the Prophet ﷺ, that we have a nas from the kitab or the sunnah to, dis, to uh, delineate that so-and-so is in the paradise or so-and-so is in the hellfire. But other than that, we refrain from saying so-and-so, Sheikh so-and-so is in, in, in Jannah. Sheikh so-and-so is in, uh, Sheikh so-and-so is in Jannah. And uh, this uh, saint is in Jannah. Or this person is in the hellfire. We refrain from that as Ahl Sunnah because we don't know the knowledge of the unseen. We we know, but we believe that a person, if they die upon kufr, they're going to be in the hellfire. And we believe that a person who dies upon righteousness and tawheed, that they will eventually be in the uh, paradise. And these things are knowledge of the unseen. So we are not aware of that. So, min baba ola, or first and foremost, we cannot supplicate to them. Especially we don't know even know their their condition, whether they're in Jinnah or not. Whether they, uh, what their life like is in Barzakh, how it is. We, we're unaware of this. This is Ilm al Ghaib. And, and Allah did not give us this, this knowledge of this. We only know the limited knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us in the Quran and through the authentic sunnah of the Prophet. So the life in Barzakh is unknown to us and we do not, uh, we do not uh, worship in accordance with that. Meaning we do not pray or supplicate to them, we do not sacrifice to them, we do not call upon them, etc. We do not pray to them. So all of our worship goes to Allah, and that is Tawheed, and the opposite of that is uh, Shirk, which we've been talking about. And the last thing I want to mention, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, referred to all of the pagans, regardless of whether they worship trees, regardless of whether they were uh, worshippers of Jesus, may peace and blessings be upon him, or even people after him who worship him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well, uh, they all had the same ending, that they would end up in the hellfire for shirk. Because all of it is shirk. Regardless of whether you worship the prophets, or the angels, or the trees, or snakes, or elephants, or rocks, or whatever it is, the rain, the sun, the moon, the stars, all of it is shirk. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are ayat, those are verses, those are the signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِ يَلَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَشْجِرُوا لِشَمْسُ وَلَا لِقَمَرُ وَشِرُوا لِلَّهِ يَلَذِي خَلَقُهُنَّ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِ يَلَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ And from His signs is the day and the night. وَشَمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ And the sun and the moon. لَا تَشْجِرُوا لِشَمْسُ And do not prostrate to the sun. وَلَا لَلْقَمْرِ Nor to the, to the moon. 
وَسِلُوا لِلَّهِ يَا لَذِي خَلَقُهُنَّ and, and instead prostrate to Allah, the one who created them, if it is him who you truly worship. Right there, that makes ibtal, ibtal of the argument of those pagans, those, especially those who worship the fire, worship the sun and the moon and the stars and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this creation. That falsifies their argument in totality. Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ Those are his signs, the, the night and the day. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرِ And the sun and the moon. لَا تَسِرُوا لِلشَّمْسِ Do not prostrate to the sun. وَلَا لِلْقَمَرِ Nor to the moon. وَالشِرُوا لِلَّهِ Then Allah orders you. Prostrate to Allah. أَلَذِي خَلَقُهُنَّ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُنُونَ If it is whom you truly worship. So that's incredibly important. And the last uh, quick benefit I want to mention uh, uh, about shirk. Shirk huwa dhum azim. Shirk is the major uh, form of oppression. Because it has to do with the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The haq of Allah. What, what did uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say when he, when he asked Mu'adh, him and Mu'adh were riding on a donkey? He said, Ya Mu'adh, hatadri ma haq Allah ali ibadi, wa ma haq li ibadi ala Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'adh, do you know what the right of Allah is upon a servant and the right of the servant is upon Allah? And he said, Allahu, Allahu Rasulu alam. He said, Allah and his messenger no mess. He said, Haq Allah ali ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la tushriku bihi shayin. Wa haq li ibadi ala Allah an la yu'adhiba man la yushriku bihi shayin. So, the uh, Prophet Sallallahu said, said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the right of Allah upon his servant is that his servant does not associate partners with him. He voids shirk. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that he, Allah will not punish him if he never commits shirk. So that's a beautiful hadith which shows us what? The right of Allah. The right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is to worship him alone. Uh, قال, An Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu لما نزلت هذه الآية الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم شق ذلك على أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقالوا أينا لم يلبس إيمانهم بظلم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنه ليس بذاك ألا تسمع إلى قول اللقمان لابنه إن شرك لظلم عظيم رواه شيخان In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was uh, related by uh, narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه he said when the verse was revealed. Alladina Amanu Walam Yelbisu Imanuhum Bidun. The verse where Allah says, Verily those who believe and do not mix their worship with Vum. Then this uh, seemed a little difficult for the companions. It, it, it was difficult for the companions of the Prophet ﷺ to understand exactly that. They were saying that the meaning they had a different uh, opinion or different view of what that that meaning. So they they wanted to know, O oh Messenger of Allah, which one of us does not does not mix their iman with vum? He said, which one? None of us can escape from that. We all, you know, have some form of oppression. Vum meaning oppression in in general, but it has many meanings. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded by saying, it's not as you uh, it's not as you think. He said, haven't you listened to the, the statement that Luqman said to his son? Inna shirka lavulmun azim. Verily shirk is the is a great form of of uh, of vum or or oppression. It's the greatest form of oppression. Letting us know. So there you have tafsir Quran. A Quran, you fessed al Quran. That a verse of the Quran explaining another verse of the Quran. Because if you look at the law here, you'll say a vum. You'll think, you know, that it means uh, just oppression. But then we go to another verse of the Quran, and this is the asl that the Quran explains the Quran. And if not, then we go to the Sunnah. And here we have the, the Quran explaining the Quran, and then the Sunnah making taqeed of that. The Prophet uh, pointing us out to that other verse. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, letting us know that shirk, that the vum here refers to shirk.
It doesn't refer to the then general oppression as the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in understood. And a last point I want to mention as a recap of this first naqid min nawaqid al-Islam in the treaties of Muhammad al wahhab is just to say some of the differences between Shirk al-Akbar and Shirk al-Asghar. Shirk al-Akbar, yukhrij sahibuhu min milat al-Islam. So the major shirk, it uh, takes the person who does it out of the fold of Islam because it negates the asl of Tawheed. As for Shirk al Asghar, then it does not take the person out of the fold of Islam, but is one of the major sins, and it um, reduces a person's Tawheed. And the person who does it is uh, a sinner. A second difference is Shirk al Akbar makes the person who fought, who does it go and be in the hellfire forever if they die upon it without making toba. As for shirk al askar then the person who does it does not stay in the hellfire forever if if they enter the hellfire at all and if they do if they're one of the muahideen then of course they will come out and be purified and go to paradise. Shirk al akbar the major shirk it uh negates all of a person's deeds if they die upon it without Tawbah as we mentioned. But the minor shirk, a riyah for example, it only negates or nullifies the deed in which it took place in as we mentioned before. And the final thing, shirk al-akbar, uh, makes, removes the sanctity of a, of a believer. Where shirk al-askar does not uh, do so uh, like Shirk al Akbar. Shirk al Akbar because it negates a person, the person has left the fold of Islam. So, for example, if they're married and they left the fold of Islam, their marriage is no longer valid with their, their previous sp spouse who is a Muslim, who is a Muslim or a Muslimah. That they've now, because they've less, left Islam, they've left that, that their, their, the deen, the ikhtilaf al deen, and even their food. Uh, a person who apostates from Islam, you cannot eat their, their, the food they sacrifice. You could eat from a Jew and a Christian but you cannot eat from this person. So there's many ahkam related to that. So it shows us the seriousness of, be, of avoiding shirk and the danger of shirk. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from shirk. And until the next time in anything correct I said was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything incorrect I said was from myself and the shaitan. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushirika bika wa ana alamu staghfiruka liman alamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.